Well, I mean, there's a million reasons to go, which you'll see in this episode. And action! Welcome back to Show and Tell. I'm Billy. This episode, I'm mostly going to devote to a little reportage on last weekend's Vogue Knitting Live in New York at the Marriott Marquis. I'm going to show you my acquisitions. Don't get too excited, but don't go away either because there's a lot of other things to share with you. Because you all raved so much about my hat in the last episode, I thought I would bring the hat back for you to see again. Purchased in Paris, recent trip. You can hear all about it in the previous episode. I'll put a link here. One of the key reasons that I love going to these shows is to search for vintage buttons. This time I was hoping to once again find Dusty's vintage buttons since I did so well with her at the last VKL in 2020. I ran into her in Rhinebeck last fall, but I didn't have my garment with me. So I vowed come February that I would meet with her again and have my cardigan with me. Unfortunately, the woman was ill and wasn't there at all. So once again, the quest for vintage buttons has eluded me. I also had an opportunity to meet the president of the Center for Knit and Crochet Digital Museum. She kindly offered to be a guest on a future episode of Show and Tell. I'm going to let her describe in more depth when she comes on the show what their website is about. So be on the lookout for that. But I will provide links so you can go and take a look. They are looking for people who want to record music to upload to their site, music that pertains to knitting or crochet. You might remember that I had a guest on my show who sings songs about knitting, Melanie Gall. If you don't remember that one, I'll give a link up here so you can go back and listen to that. It'll be very exciting when Jennifer comes on to talk to us more about it. I did see some beautiful yarns, but as you know, I'm not from the stashers. So while I admire things and think about future projects, I really don't wanna to get too far ahead of myself. I have several things in progress right now that I would like to wrap up before I start to acquire new yarns. It's a little bit of a pipe dream. Sometimes you can't resist. I, for the most part, did resist this time, but I saw this yarn And I simply fell in love with the color. The fact that it's the softest thing next to a baby's bottom that I have ever felt was also an added benefit. Unfortunately, the person selling this line did not have a single sample of it knitted up. I think he might have had something crocheted with it. I don't know, but I wanted to see and feel a piece of knitting. So I made a deal with him. I said, if you let me have a ball overnight, I'll go home and I'll knit you up a swatch so that you can have that in your booth for other people to see and feel. So Richard of Global Artisan allowed me to do just that. And I really do love it. It's 100% bamboo. It's called Vinnie's Colors Serena. A little tricky to knit with because it's got eight ply and a little bit splitty. My chagu needles are pretty sharp, but I still love the feel of it so much that I'd be willing to put up with that. I might have done better on a wooden or a bamboo needle, but my chagus were the thing that were handy. So I don't know if you can call that an acquisition. I guess it is because now it's in my possession. Thank you, Richard. My other acquisitions were acquired at the yarn toss that takes place every time they do a VKL. The first skein of yarn that I caught was a forest green, sort of emerald, between emerald green and forest green. I wasn't crazy about the color, but I did quickly put it into my bag. Then I caught two more skeins. It's all Malabrigo yarn. 
It's their lace weight. And the tag says that it's baby merino. It is also very soft. And I think what we're looking at here is doubled and it's felt it together already. Um, let me see if I can split this apart. So, oh, okay, I'm not sure. It looks pretty fine to me. Um, 470 yards in 50 grams. I'm not sure what the gauge is. It's not mentioned on this tag. I'm sure you can find this yarn on Ravelry. So I love this color blue. And I also caught this multicolored like jewel tones. There's green, there's teal, there's purple, turquoise, there's olive, navy. It's really rich, really beautiful. So I don't see these two going together, but I could see this with another yarn that I have. And again, not to get ahead of myself, I'm already dreaming about adding this on to some of the leftover teal that I have from my Sirdar Chevron and maybe making a scarf. I saw a woman at the show who was wearing a sweater, maybe it was a ranunculus, and then she had this beautiful shawl over it that coordinated. I haven't seen too many people doing that, but I really admired that look. And I thought I might like to have a shawl or a scarf to coordinate with each of my sweaters. They don't take up a lot of room, which is important for me. And they would keep my hands knitting. And it would give me an opportunity to be a little bit creative with textures and some colors. Because if I have a solid color sweater, I could do something two-tone that would still coordinate. So no specific plans yet, but I do have something in mind. The last thing that I acquired, a pack of pom-pom trim guides. I don't have a lot of call for pom-poms in any of my projects, but I thought that someday I might like to add little pom-poms around the sleeve of a sweater, like a jacket or something, a bolero kind of a jacket. If you remember the one that I showed from my Aunt Matilda had little tassels going around. I thought something like that. So this set has eight different sizes, starting with 0.75 inches and going all the way up to two and a half inches. And what you do is, you make your little ball of yarn tied in the middle. The woman gave me a very good tip, which is wrap your yarn around the tines of a fork. And then when you start to trim, you use this as your guide. You trim around this to, and you keep changing the direction until you get every side, every angle of your pom-pom to measure up with this. And it makes a pretty nice little sphere. I'll have to try it, but I thought these looked pretty good. Anyway, I have many more than I need. So I'd like to do a random drawing to give a few of these away to my viewers. So don't forget, your comments are always welcome. And for now, that's the way to get entered into my drawing. So please comment and have a chance to get one of these pom-pom trimming guides. I'll put in the show notes, the vendor, in case you're interested in purchasing a whole pack of these. She gave me her card at the show and she's offering 10% off your next order with the code NEON10. I'll put that in the show notes so, so you get the correct spelling. I think she also has a guide on her website, other ways of making pom-poms using her template. So that was kind of a fun thing. It's called the Neon Tea Party. I also met a woman named Beatrice Bonanno. 
representing a company called Wool Dreamers. They're from Spain. And I'm going to show you a little clip here. She describes how they're using the fleece from dairy sheep who normally wouldn't have the most desirable fleece to spin yarn from. But this company is trying to be ecologically friendly and not waste that fleece. So here's her story. Wool Dreamers, and we have uh, this line here, this is Mota, and it is a line spun from waste wools from the dairy industry. All of this is from sheep that produce milk for various cheeses, and their wool is typically composted or burned, and we developed this line as well as another line to show that these wools can be a wonderful resource for the ranchers, and when the wool is taken into greater consideration, the sheep benefit as well, because wool is such a high indicator of the quality of life. So, yes, it's a wonderful yarn to work with, and it's very fun. Lots of colors, so many colors. The lovely people from Camellia Fiber Company have shared a discount code, Vogue 2023, that expires March 31st this year, 10% off your order. They had lovely things. I was especially admiring their alpaca merino and silk blend. Another company whose yarns I really admired and their booth was just so simple and elegant. All the yarns were the natural color. There was nothing dyed. They're called Rooster Yarns. You can find them on Etsy. I'm not sure if they also have a website, roosteryarns.com. I'll put it in the show notes if they do. And I'll insert a picture here of a couple of uh, their presentations. I also had the chance to meet the folks from Molly Girl. They too are offering a code through the end of February. VKL, thank you in all capital letters. Free shipping with that code. And I'll show one of their yarns here that I thought looked very interesting. One of the other highlights of Vogue Knitting Live are the fashion shows that they put on. So Barocco, I always wondered how you pronounce their name, if it was Barocco or Barocco, but I heard them saying Barocco, gave out these little brochures showing all the different models that they presented in the fashion show. And with each one, it gives the pattern number and name I have a few of these, so if you're interested in having one, just drop me a note in the comments and I could send one your way. Rowan also mounted a couple of different fashion shows and they put out this little brochure, again, showing the different sweaters. Um, it gives you the idea, the look of metallic. And yet it's simple enough to wear, you know, you don't have to wear it just for dress up. The people from Rowan also were interviewed on stage. And one of the days that I was there, I had an opportunity to meet the brand manager. I happened to be wearing a sweater that was knit with Rowan Felted Tweed, one of their yarns. And we got into a conversation and he had mentioned his favorite yarn and offered to send me some so that I could knit it and share it with you. So look for that in a future episode. I don't know when that yarn will arrive and when I'll actually have a chance to start knitting with it, but be on the lookout for that. Thank you, David. Another thing that they do at Vogue Knitting Live is they have tables set up for various special interest groups. So they're not yarn vendors, but as an example, there's this group called Knit Knit the Rainbow, they enlist volunteers to hand knit things like hats and garments for homeless youth who are LGBTQ+. I'll put a link to their website. They also told me that 
some local yarn shops have drop-off locations. Um, they're also looking for designers who will be willing to donate free patterns. So if you're able to help them out, I'll put a link to their website and you can follow up with them. I will say I'm really fortunate that Vogue Knitting Live takes place right here in New York City where I live. So I'm gonna put a few more photos and maybe some more footage of some of the things that I experienced during this weekend and some of the friends and new friends who I ran into. Hogi Locatelli, Aimé Gilles from La Bien -Aimé. And then some other women who are just really talented knitters. There are more people who I didn't snap pictures with, but a good time was had by all. If you ever have an opportunity to come to New York for this, it's great. It's very different from Rhinebeck because it's much more urban setting, obviously. <laughs> They're like two opposites, no sheep here, but there's still a lot of fun and beautiful things to behold. Panel discussions, fashion shows, and meeting other knitters. <laughs> Argyle motif inspired by traditional Japanese textiles. He has taken the Argyles and imparted other traditional and I say Japanese techniques. And I when a woman wears a piece that she loves. I have wonderful stockists who carry my yarn and sell, and I have home away from home here in Brooklyn. I have a place in Portland. So that's you my pleasure. Yeah. You need a place in Brazil. And soon in Brazil. <laughs> so that's amazing. And it's a very different place. And it's not different in, okay, buildings are different or people are different. It's just the knitting world is completely different. I, for example, I'm not uh, popular in my country because I don't have any skill that my fellow Argentine leaders don't have. They, we, we all learn to meet the same way, we all learn to be the owners of our own knitter, of our own knitting. Um, we all learn truly how to design our own projects. Right, the whole idea of the book is, I, I feel like people think every knitting teacher popped out of the womb like, oh, SSK. Central <laughs> decrease. Yes. I know how to do No, 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 no. So, um, I'm just going to read a tiny bit, bit from book if I can. It's called A Knitter's Book of Why Not. I am a self-taught knitter. Allow me to elaborate. I am a self-taught knitter who's done everything wrong and lived to tell the tale. When I sat down to write this introduction, I realized I sounded a bit like I was introducing myself at a 12-step program. <laughs> Hello, my name is Patty. I am a self-taught knitter. But I think there's value in revealing how I got here and how this book came to be. When I started knitting, I didn't always know the right way to do something. Sometimes I couldn't find an answer, so I made up a way. One of the most important bookmarks that I picked up was from an organization called Project Knitwell. Their website is projectknitwell.org. 
And I've pulled up a page to show you since they talk about on their card, igniting happiness chemicals as a result of the art of knitting. The chemicals that they cite are dopamine, serotonin, endorphin, and oxytocin. Whenever I see anything that's scientific like that, I'm interested in knowing, well, where's the scientific research? So when I went to their website, they have a tab on research, which I pulled up to just scroll through with you. There's a series of different articles, creating healthy communities through collaboration and art, knitting for well-being, knitting and building resilience, and so forth. Plus they also have, it looks like a Pinterest kind of a thing here where you can click on all of these different articles. I think that's something worth looking into. I'll put the link in the show notes because if you know someone who's struggling with any kind of mental health issue or they've lost a job and are feeling kind of worthless. Knitting seems to be a pretty good skill to have in your bag of tricks. In this one article, a little bit of which I'm showing here, someone named Dr. Ken Ginsberg talks about the seven C's resilience model where you can build resilience by learning in these seven areas, competence, confidence, connection, character, contribution, coping and control. So I thought that's worth having a read. In another article, they point to <clears throat> researchers, Dr. Herbert Benson and Miriam Z. Clipper, who talk about relaxation response. These researchers found that a rhythmic activity and a passive attitude could lead to stress reduction. In many cases, knitting is cited as one of the most accessible rhythmic crafts available. I hope this is the kind of information that's beneficial to you or to someone you love. In the last episode, I promised to do a random drawing for the tote bag from Les Tricoteurs Volants and the little Eiffel Tower stitch marker that Enrico generously offered me. So here you can see I'm at the page. I've put in the URL for that specific video and I've answered their question, five and five is 10 and it's going to fetch the YouTube comments. And the winner is Robin Capuano. So Robin, please private message me your address and I will get those things out to you. Congratulations. Robin's been a long time follower of this channel. So I'm, I'm always happy when it's one of the regular commenters. Thanks for being here. Love chatting with you. I'll see you next time. Yeah.